Oh wait, so even much more hotter around here. Yo, tell me about it. Even compared to World 8 in um, New Super Mario Bros. Wii and New Super Mario Bros. 2's World 6, and even Peter's Castle from New Super Mario Bros. U. Yeah, I can only agree. Hey everybody, this is me, Sonic the Hedgehog here, and I'm Sylvester here. We are back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my last play of Super Mario 3D World for the Nintendo Wii U. So last time we managed to explore through World 6, and now we're going to continue on and move on to World Castle, aka World 7. So, let's get this thing started with the first level in World Castle, Fort Fire Bros. So, in this case, World Castle-1. Dash, dash so even then though, that um, the first character we're going to be using for this particular world is obviously Mario. So even then though, that uh, we haven't usually picked players Mario ever since... Um, I would say for the um, the mystery box uh, type of uh, marathon type of syndrome. Well, not exactly marathon, just a throwback. So even then, or throwdown, I should say. So yeah, I believe this is a level that is usually showcased in um, during an E3 2013 by the likes of this level in particular. Um, I believe the noticeable difference between the E3 2013 version compared to the final version of um, Super Mario 3D World is the fact that the level itself is now even blue, so even then though, that, um, you know, it makes a little bit of a difference here when it comes to colors of the, um, the you know, the level itself. Well, obviously, we don't want to touch the level, obviously, because if you, because even then, that, um, we automatically get died by that, so... I also expected that, um, you know, we don't want to, you know, touch the level, obviously, so anyways... Now we need to head on here, so that we can actually deal with a yet another ball puzzle syndrome, just like how it does it in Cake Wall Flip in World 5, but except the fact that we need to actually uh, directly place that ball onto the different side this time. So even then though, I believe previously that uh, it was actually on the right side, but now on the left side this time around. So, yeah, that makes it obvious. So, anyway though. So, well, how's anyone doing, if, if those would be very curious? Um, uh, again, I do stress that enough, that how the fact that, um, if, um, I felt kind of stressed out how the fact that, um, Duffy was now going to be doing Mario Party events for the Game Boy Advance. Now, one of the comments on, um, during the Mario Party events Let's Play so far, and that was the forms of how the fact that, um, he just tried to let, um, he's trying to let us delete our playthrough of My Party Bands. I wish I could, but too bad we have to actually focus on My Party Bands because, well obviously that um, the ones he, she mostly interests of is actually forms of Sonic 06 last play, su surprisingly enough. But even then though, that uh, we will promise you guys is that Duffy will get back onto it and during, in, um, during the Monday the 25th. So even then though, that because of that though, it's really, which really, um, sorry I can't speak today. Uh, we need to actually get on to Sonic 06 before Sonic Forces is about to be released until, you know, the 7th of November. Oh yeah, speaking of Sonic Forces, is that they did recently announce there's going to be a, a brand new English trailer, which actually brings us to the story elements. So even then though, I can't wait to see how the story actually plays out to be. So, um, now, I believe, um, we already mentioned this on during that, uh, uh, the previous video on this, is the fact that, uh, we've recently got ourselves the, uh, revealed for... Shadow, uh, episode Shadow on Sonic Forces. But even then though, I'm presuming it's only exclusive to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and even PC version, but still no sign for the Nintendo Switch version. So even then though, that we can figure that out during, I would possibly think in during October, or some kind of, in the beginning of November, once that game is slowly approaching. So, anyway, so the stamp on this level is the forms of Mario's gonna be throwing the, well, fireball. So yeah, that's all we can actually figure this out. And I believe we're now going to be moving on to these other two levels as far as I can see how this is going. So even then though, that, uh, I think the reason why the hell the fact that one of the comments in during the last video, or in this case the second part of, you know, Mario Party events, that uh, one of the um, YouTube commenters actually wants us to go back onto Sonic 06, I think it's probably because they always enjoyed the, the reaction of Deffy's reaction to Sonic 06 so far, so... As far as I can go for that, but I'm pretty sure it's probably worth it. So, anyway, though, so there's a slot machine, and now we're going to be hit on to uh, World Castle 2 Switch Black Ruins. And uh, for this level, we might as well go for Blue Toad. And we'll go for um, Peach for the next level because the reason why we'll get to that in a moment. So, anyway, so as you can see, we're now actually on a top down perspective right there, very similar to the ones in um, Super Mario 3D Land. Uh, I would say level um, 5-2, 
and um, I think that's about it, basically, Sylvester. And basically, the entire premise of this level's gimmick is, is the fact that we need to constantly switch in those arm switches on. So, if all the switches been active, then you weren't able to actually actually access to this next area. So, yeah, as far as memories go, that's all there is to say. And taking notes from Super Mario 3D Land's um, first star medal in level 5002, uh, the first green star is to simply have to um, light up the entirety of the Latins or torches. So, too bad it doesn't have the single uh, the Zelda jingle, unfortunately. But uh, at least it's kind of works. So, anyways, so the second green star, you have to go onto the far right, and then boom, there you go. So the third and final green star is going to be somewhere nearly nearly at the end. So even then, uh, I definitely know what the uh, the level stamp is going to be located. So even then, uh, we can hopefully guarantee we can actually find those two things. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, oh yeah, another thing I've kind of mentioned though is the fact that uh, during it yesterday they managed to saw the release of uh, Mario the Pony the movie soundtrack. Which even then though, that as far as the uh, the music selection goes, is actually pretty solid. And even then though, that I found is a really enjoyable experience. My favorite track will have to be. Uh, let's say two music so far, which are consist of, well, Rainbow, but performed by Sia, which is usually the, you know, the main music video for that particular movie itself, and um, also um, of To See The World by um, Lucas uh, Gauham, so, or Granham, so, yeah, I really enjoyed it, actually, so even then, though, that um, definitely recommended that, so, um, of course, we only got about, like, you know, um, I would say uh, 13 days to go? Yeah, 13 days to go, assuming this is actually a North American version rather than just the European or the UK version yet, because we've still got, quite, we've still got plenty of time until um, the UK's release date, so even then, oh, don't worry, we will get to that one point. So anyway, it's Thursday, third and final green star, so you have to find the invisible um, trio block right there, or the long block, I should say. Yeah, that long block does make a return from New Super Mario Bros. 2 somehow, and even Super Mario 3D, um, I would say Super Mario 3D Land as well. But I may be wrong about that, because I haven't usually played um, Super Mario 3D Land for quite some time, even for two years two years ago. I, I could appreciate it by that. Or maybe just a year ago. Maybe. I don't know. Alright, so we got ourselves our stamp on this level, and now we see forms of the spining shell. So even though I know that we can definitely guarantee half the fact that we actually come across into those enemies a lot. So, yeah, now we got ourselves our item shop into our disposal. And before we actually get into the next level, we need to actually double check what is onto this little particular stones into this particular um, floor over there, which actually leads us to the pipe. And this will lead us to the yet another Fire Bro. In this case, Fire Bros Hideout number 4. So, 4 hideouts for the Fire Bros. And we'll go for Luigi for this particular level right there. And we still only have 100 seconds to our disposal, and look at all that! We got all, um, I believe, seven of those um, Fire Bros um, crowded between us. But even though no, no, that much like, in, much like the previous encounters, is that this is particularly easy, assuming if you actually be very cautious or be careful with these fireball projectiles. So, if you get the hang of it, it's not too bad, and even then, it's not too shabby either. So, 74 referencing from King Lucifer 74. So, yeah, as far as I was mainly concerned with this. Alright then, so that does it for that, and now we need to get out of here, and now we need to actually get on to World Castle-3, which is probably is the trickiest level in the entirety of this world. Which, the reason why we say that is because we'll get into that as soon as we jump in. And speaking of such, the next character we're going to be selecting is definitely Princess Peach. So, anyway though, so here we go. Uh, Red Heart Run, so definitely going to be using Princess Peach, because first off, uh, we got 100 seconds, just like how it does it in... Fire Bro Hideout uh, number 4, but this time around though, it's the fact that we actually got ourselves our boost pads. And then basically, take your notes from Sonic 06 Mark Speed sections from Crisis City, or even like, the tornado's carrying a car. Even though technically, there's no cars around here, technically speaking, but anyway. And also at the same time, is um, Unreal's um, department from Sonic 06, oh no, I keep not mentioning Sonic 06. Uh, Sonic and Stiku Rings, I should say. It's the fact that you can't able to actually go back, assuming if it is, this is all linear, so... Basically, there are no checkpoints in this level, so if you failed up at least once, then you have to redo the whole entire level again, assuming you have to be very careful, so... This is a perfect example of that why we're going to be using Princess Peach in this level, probably because of how tricky this level can be. 
And by the way, if you want to get the golden flag on this level, be sure to get be sure to take the middle um, clear pipe so that way you would able to actually lead you to the top. And luckily we managed to complete this level on the first try. So for those of you who are actually first time playing for this game, sometimes this level can get really difficult at times, mainly if you have to play as Mario for the whole time. So anyways, for well, the stamp on this level is the forms of the Super League. So not too bad. So um yeah, pretty cool stuff. Oh yeah, another thing I need to point out though is the fact that uh, we only got about, uh, let's just say, six days left until the Super Mario Run decided to actually put in a new update. Not even um, a, a new update, but also some new features coming up alongside with the update. Uh, first off is the fact that they did they did manage to discuss um, they're going to be bringing up a new playable character into the uh, the 2D Mario game for the very first time, and that was the forms of Princess Daisy. So yes, Princess Daisy's first time she's ever going to be exploring in a 2D Mario game. So yeah, this is going to be really exciting. And also at the same time, um, they're going to be bringing up a uh, Remix 10 mode, which I'll talk more on that details as soon as we get into this level right here, which in this case, World Castle Dash 4, Boiling Blue Bully Belt. So we'll go back with Mario again. So um, in this particular level right there, it's the fact that we're going to be coming across into those uh, bullies as far as we already saw those guys ever since, um, you know, for the likes of how it does it in uh, the uh, the seasick um, ship level from World 6. So uh, we already discovered these um, enemies before, so you can then know that, uh, again, it, World Castle does sort of reminds me of almost related to Super Mario 64's um, level, which is called uh, Lethal Lava Land, except the fact that in Super Mario 64 that the lava on that game was entirely in red. However, in this game in particular though, it's in forms of blue instead of red. So, yeah, that's how this goes, eh? So there's Green Star number one, that we can hopefully try and obtain it. So even then that we've already obtained that, as a matter of fact. I have no idea why I was checking on them here, it's probably because I've, I was clearly thinking of there's going to be a mystery box around here somewhere. Although it turns out it's going to be over there. Yeah, I easily spotted that. So there's a level stamp, by the way, if you those would be very curious if you want to grab it. And there's a mystery box right there, so even then that we can instantly jump in until we get ourselves a second um, green star, I should say. So anyway, back into what we are saying about the newest updates coming up on Super Mario Run. And obviously forms up, we already mentioned that Daisy's going to be a playable character for the very first time on during the, um, the mainstream Mario titles. Um, not counting the, um, the spin-off titles, mind you. Well, because obviously Daisy always becomes a playable character in the Mario Kart series. Well, some three exceptions. And also, um, the Mario Party universe. Well, at least three exceptions yet again. From the likes of Mario Party 1 and 2, and even Mario Party Vans. I've no idea why Daisy was not being included in Mario Party Vans at all. But even though that just makes ridiculous sense. So, and another thing I'd like to point things out is the forms of Remix 10, which... I believe Remix 10 is a, a, a frantic uh, new mode that allows you to actually play for a set of 10 sh super short sections in the likes of the Super Mario Run's uh, existing levels in the quick section. So yeah, and these stages are entirely remixed and even then though, that's with each attempt and the rainbow colored um, bonus medals will be coming across into those uh, with these bite sized stages. It's all it's fresh challenge every time. So. This means is that we would able to get ourselves our next um, collectible in the game. However though, Remax 10 doesn't include the, um, the game over screen, so even then though, every time you failed, or even just about to like, you know, you'll proceed to the next one without any sort of penalty time. So even then though, that might be pretty interesting to say the least. And then also that, um, and for those of you probably wondering that um, uh, the Daisy was going to be a playable character, but it turns out it's going to be, she's going to be the unlockable character in the game, while well, simply we have to complete Remix 10 mode. So, that's far as memories goes, that's all I can say. And also they're going to be bringing up a brand new world into the, um, this, uh, you know, the Super Mario Run game, and obviously it forms of World Star. See, Fernando, not to be confused as World Star from New Super Mario Bros. 2, and even for the future stuff, which we're not going to be we're not going to be spoiling for this particular game just yet. So I digress. So the badge on this level is just brick block. So anyways, and another thing I like to point out though is the fact that they can actually now choose your own soundtracks. Even then though, that could be pretty um cool to see how this is going to be turned out to be. So I wonder if how the fact that uh, we can able to actually run in. Uh, Sears song on uh, during the Super Mario run, which was the forms of Rainbow. I mean, that would be pretty interesting. 
yeah, I highly agree. So anyways, now we move on to these uh these enemies once again. Boulder Lurp, walkable is black is back. So let's go for uh let's go for Peach. So what this meant it was is that we're gonna be fighting this guy again, but this time with a little bit more difficult pattern, because as you can tell that uh, these uh, really annoying homing uh, fireballs that I love to actually um, chasing after you. So, and in order to actually get rid of them, is by simply you have to knock them out with simply just using the burrowing flower. But unfortunately, though, we don't have that at the moment because, well, obviously we have to do this the hard way then. So, anyway, um, as far as um, new stuff is concerned with the Super Mario Run stuff and during the um, during the next Friday. I'm actually going to be really, really excited with this, especially when Daisy is now going to be finally a playable debut in a 2D Mario game for the first time, or for that matter, the mainstream Mario um, game, at least the main Mario games in particular. So that could be a hell of a lot more fun as far as the that's been concerned. So it looks like consistently, so far we actually may actually get uh, three female characters onto that game now. The only ones left, it will probably be Rosalina, possibly. But even then, I'm not, sure, I'm not exactly sure if that's true or not. But even then, we'll definitely have to find this out during that time. So, so anyways, there he goes. He got knocked out. And now we need to actually deal with the Prince uh, Prince Bully once again. But this time, he's actually in a different color this time. It's actually forms of blue instead of red. So, well, the, uh, the red color was actually forms of World 6. Prince Bully Blockable is back, aka uh, World Castle Dash B. So, even though we've technically done this in an odd order, so yeah, that's why we decided to do uh, C first and then A second and B for last. Yeah, I don't know why about you. So, just like last time, all you have to do is basically just have to, like, you know, send him onto the clear pipes and then every time he's in, again, in a cylinder mode, then it's your chance to actually just knock him out. So. But again, uh, uh, the only noticeable difference between the, uh, the normal counterpart of it for him, as opposed to the likes of where he is right now, is the forms of how the fact that he can now actually scoot out three fireballs this time, and plus the fireball color was actually blue this time. So, yeah, it's basically kind of like how he does it from before, except a little bit tricky. So yeah, that's all there is to say about this. So now we got 187 uh, green stars, quote unquote. So we should able to get get quite enough green stars until we actually proceed to the game. So, all right. So now we move on to level castle, or in this case, world castle dash five, uh, tricky trap tower. So for this level, we're gonna be going for Luigi. Yeah, Luigi's number one. Well, until next year, that uh, Luigi become 35 years at this point. Well, I was really hoping that Luigi's Mansion 3 should be up on the N Nintendo Switch. Or maybe something a little bit different for Luigi, but even then, we'll definitely have to find things out during that time period. I think I recognize this music, actually, because if you guys, uh, if you probably don't know the game, the fan-made game called uh, Paper Mario 3D Land, uh, that game is basically more likely a Paper Mario version of Super Mario 3D Land, because, well, obviously, yeah. You could actually take a large portion of the shortcut, as you can see, by simply just skipping the entire platforming section. You can simply just grab the stamp, and even the green star as a result, and you weren't able to skip the entire portion of it while simply just using a Cat Luigi. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And it's also the second green star in order to get it, by simply you have to clear out all the Kamek enemies. So, yeah, as far as memories goes, that's all I can say about this. So. Anyway, so now we need to climb onto this second tower, and hopefully we're going to be grabbing our ways to opportunity to actually just to able to grab um, every single key point. So even then, though, yeah. So I highly suggest you recommend you clear out these particular enemies, as you can see here. Currently, there are some um, enemies I do uh, kind of miss to actually jump on. And that's only because of how the fact that uh, we'll explain more details onto that. Right. Anyway, so the third and final green star, you have to be like. The bigger formation of of any character in order to actually just roll first for those um, blocks. So even then, though, you should be able to deal with it. So, alright, so I need to get the last coin key. And once you grab them all, then the wolf block has appeared. And just when you think if you've successful it, then this poisonous gas will. Oh no! God damn it. Anyway, back again. Sorry about that, folks. And let's try that again. So, anyway. So, as you can see, we need to actually get the hell away from this poisonous gas. And then if you time, every time when you're trying to get touched by this poisonous gas, 
then you instantly die, so you have to watch out desperately. So, and also you need to be very careful of is these enemies that I've always attempt to ignore. That's only because of how the fact that we're, we're in a bit of a hurry. And also judging by the fact these little springboards can sometimes easily screw you over if you accidentally just um, jump onto them. So even then that, that uh, it's a little bit too much of a risky move. So anyway, so let's grab the on um, the golden flagpole and we've completed it. Oh, that was a bit of a waste opportunity, especially if we accidentally died at the very end of a level, strangely. So anyway though, well, that, that's, uh, that's it for out the way. And speaking of a stamp, we got ourselves a chemic stamp. So how about that then? And um, yeah, before we get into the next level, and especially notice the in the Captain Toad level, we're gonna have to go for that particular um, um, you know, the water level first before we actually do anything else. So here we go. On to actually, before we actually continue, we're gonna have to grind ourselves some power ups into this particular Toad House over there. And so we get ourselves something that's very important onto this next level. So, hooray! We got ourselves not only the, uh, a cat, well, as far as the cat bell is concerned. Sorry for a lack of, um, awkwardness going on because, you know, sometimes my commentary can get a little bit too messy at one point, especially noticeable how the fact that, um, my description of my subtitles is going a bit jumbled up mess. So, anyway, though. So anyways, now we got ourselves our cat power up with us, and in addition to the fire flower, because the reason why, we'll get into that in doing right about now. So here we go with World Castle-6, uh, uh, Ramahead Reef. And we're once again going back into Mario again. But this time we're going to be swimming underwater. The only, uh, uh, water level in this particular world. Well, at least as far as so far, anyway. So, um, uh, yeah. Not much else, you know, to say about this particular part, for the most part. So, even then though, still I'm looking forward to that particular point. Oh, god dang it. Oh well, at least there's a fire flower, the spare fire flower we can instantly manage to grab. So, how about that then? I guess there was a point of how the fact that, um, we could have potentially trying to grab the fire flower from early one, but it turns out that uh, we did this by mistake, because, uh, until we get to the actual castle level on this, uh, world castle, quote unquote, world, uh, we have to basically, we need to grab ourselves not only one, but two power-ups at the same time. So, um, that could be far from potential though. Let's just go say that much now. So, um, anyway though. So as far as this level suggests, we actually come across into those new types of enemies introduced in this game, which do forms of the Remaheads. Um, basically they almost kind of remind me of almost related to those, uh, particular fishes where they do have their eyes in their far side of the, um, the fish body itself. Uh, by the way, the second green star, you can either just uh, touch it barely, or just simply just chuck the fireball right out the bubble until it pops. So, that's how it goes, hey? So, um, there's no point for grabbing a mushroom for the time being, because obviously we're going to be keeping our fire flower for the time, until we get ourselves uh, possibly the third and final um, green star in this level. So. Hopefully we're not going to get hit quite a few times at this one point. So, at least as far as I was hoping it to be. So, oh, goodness gracious, that was close. <laughs> anyway though, so we ended up the outside part of the actual um, magma itself, and you can see there's actually lava in this particular outside part. So that's kind of weird, to say the least. So, anyway though, uh, another thing it's kind of mentioning though, is the fact that um, they... I don't know about you, but I'm guaranteed by the fact that, um, well, I would say for the hell the fact that, I oh, forget, what's, what's that you're trying to say? Oh, it's nothing, Sylvester, it's probably nothing, because there's not much else we can say about this for the most part, because that's besides, that's the only piece of news we can only think of, so. Oh yeah, besides the fact that, uh, recently they, uh, Rotten Tomatoes did recently, oh yeah, before I get into that, um, this is why you need to require a fire flower in order to actually get the third and final green star, because if not, then you would able to not get it, because if you get into the clear pipe when there's some spikes that are still intact, um, you get knocked back and out of the other uh, clear pipe, so just one point things out. So, um, yeah, anyway though, back into what I was saying from before, uh, recently that uh, Rotten Tomatoes did recently get ourselves the review of the Lego Ninjago movie. And as far as I can gather, unlike how it does it in the LEGO movie, which is really popular by its own, and especially noticeable in the LEGO Batman movie was also quite popular too, however though, of all the LEGO movies they actually did release, 
Um, I believe that the Lego Ninja Go is probably the weakest um Lego movies at this point in time. I don't know why this is probably is the weakest of the bunch. It's only because of how the fact that I recently looked up on some scores that give it like a 50% or something like that. Or but sometimes mainly due to uh, it's probably just because of how it's more likely a combination of the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie at this same time. So I think that's why that how I believe that film gets mixed for some reason. So even then, uh, let's just see how this goes until when that film comes out. Although I really don't know if I can see it or not because even then, uh, as far as I've heard from the uh, heard from the truth. So long jump for the win. There we go. There's no reason we can just simply just jump over for that ledge and just miss the um the gold flagpole. But if but hey, long jump usually works. So I don't know if how the fact that we can able to actually watch the film as we already established that. So and right off the bat though, we we did manage to go 101 seconds left, right? <sighs> the love of God, 101 Dalmatians again. Anyway though. So they thought that's it for that level, and now we're going to be moving on to the next level, which is the forms of World Castle Dash Seven, which was, um, if I can recall for that level's name, uh, Simmering Lava Lake. And for this level, we'll definitely go for Peach because uh, we'll probably um, go for the castle level with either Luigi or Toad because unfortunately though that, well, somehow we managed to get Peach her majority of the castle levels because. We totally made a mistake about how the fact that in uh, level 6 uh, castle, or in this case level 6 uh, tank level, that uh, we accidentally uh, selected Peach on that level. So originally we were supposed to go for Luigi, but it turns out because of how the fact that uh, we haven't played some of these characters for too many times or so many each of the levels, so I think that's the only cosmetic problem. So. So from here, we actually got ourselves our Burrang Flower, and this is the reason why we need to get ourselves our Burrang Flower just to begin with, because of this green star. But there's going to be another level that's going to be evolving for the exactly same item, but we'll get to that in a moment. So anyway though. So in this level's gimmick is the fact that this lava will start to rise, and then every time when you see this little uh, ground tiles, most notably the grey coloured uh, you know, grounds, means is that um, the lava itself will start to actually rise and then it will sink down eventually, and then when you come to the um, the green um, colored uh, platform and all that stuff, uh, this meant that you'll be safe. So you can end up that, uh, be sure to actually make, make a mad dash into the green platform until you make yourself safe. But if not, then chances are you will get burnt into your death. So, yeah, I just want to clarify that until right about now. There's also a shortcut over there, but I might rather not risk it, because obviously that Peach's momentum will slowly able to actually just uh, slowly last for long, so it doesn't last for long, so... Anyway though, hopefully we can get rid of that dry bones, that peskiness, um, you know, skeleton as far as I can really think of. And there's a level stem just underneath for this particular uh, pavement over there. And I believe the third and final green star is not that far away from here, this is basically if we actually jump from the other side, then we weren't able to actually grab ourselves... Are you kidding me? Seriously, I really hate these enemies. They always are trying to actually ignore me, or in this case, really annoy me. So, yeah, as far as I can really gather up at that one point. So, you know, for the most part, you have to be very careful and cautious and all happy. So, even then, no, that's why I'm mainly concerned with this. So, anyways, I believe this might actually be the final point of the level, actually. So, even then, no, yeah. Oh, what? Oh, frickin', I'm cutting it. Okay, there we go. Finally. Oh man. I did not know it's right off the bat is the fact that um I just seriously did not even know. These particular lava monsters, they instantly killed you. So there you go. Okay. Well, at least we only go in for more accurately two attempts on this level, so we don't have to like uh deal with that time, which is pretty good. Plus we certainly we have to do yay. Anyways, we got a burrowing flower stamp into our, you know, stamp collection, and now we should able to move on to the actual castle level in this world castle, quote unquote. Now before we, before we hit into that, we need to deal with a Captain Toad level first, before we actually move on. Oh yeah, exactly. So, speaking of Captain Toad, and now we'll see forms of we need to actually get into this pipe over there, until we actually found him. So, there you go then. 
I really love the artwork actually for this particular meat so I do give uh, credits to that. Oh yeah, one thing I haven't mentioned about the stamp system is the forms of how the fact that I did firstly introduce the stamps in during that um, this game in particular. They also did make their appearance of the stamp sim system from the likes of, you know, Mario Kart 8 as far as we already mentioned earlier. And also there's going to be one from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. But it turns out there was actually one game that we totally ignored when that particular discussion happens. Oh, and besides NES Remix 1 and NES Remix 2. Um, basically simple premise is though, is the fact that um, somehow they managed to actually uh, realize that how the fact there's a stamp collection in Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. So yeah, that's one game we totally ignored to actually discuss upon because um, I just did not even notice that right off the bat. Because even then, though, it has been a year since uh, we last time played Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Although we will get into that game one day again, because even then, though, the only time we need to wait for is the fact that if they did announce the next Mario and Sonic at the uh, Olympic Games type of franchise, most notably the uh, the South Korea 2018. I kept saying South Korea 2018 because I don't know what's that specific name I might add for that spelling department. I have to apologize for that. But even then though, if that's going to be announced on Nintendo Switch or possibly the Nintendo 3DS, it all depends of, um, during, the, um, during the release stage during that time, or mainly just a Nintendo Switch exclusive, uh, we weren't able to know we can actually just replay those games again. Well, at least for the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games um, universe, or in this case, you know, serious. So anyway though. So anyway, so that's it for that level. Basically, the gimmick on that level, there's one thing I've been mentioning about this level entirely, and that's the forms of you about to be uh, spending most of your time onto this conveyor belt, in addition to you actually hopping onto on top of the form. So, thus far as memories goes, that's all I can say about this for, this, for the most part. And now we need to hit onto the last level in World Castle, which was World Castle Castle. So, in order to actually unlock it, by simply you have to collect 130 green stars. And if you do that though, then you would able to unlock it. So, not too shabby. So, here we go, onto World Castle Castle. Yeah, weird name. And now we see of Bowser's Lava Lake Keep. And for this level, we'll definitely go for Blue Toad. Even though we would like to actually play as Luigi, but we're actually going to be saving that until we actually get into the next um, Bowser uh, type levels. So even then though, that uh, we'll definitely guarantee by that. So, even though I do apologize for you Luigi for actually just being like, oh, you got to kill me. Anyways, um, in this level in particular is that um, it has been a really long time since you're actually going to be exploring for or heard of this music before. I think last time we actually heard this theme music it was actually formed up in World 5 somewhere and also during that the first castle on the game. So not as far as memories goes, that's all I can really think about it. But when it comes to the music choices as far as I'm can heard of. So anyways, uh, there's a level stamp over there. Now in order to actually get ourselves a second green star, but you only have to actually require either two items which are consist of Tanuki suit or the cat power up. Well Unfortunately though, we don't get ourselves our power-ups like this, because um, unfortunately though, we didn't have ourselves to get a chance to get ourselves- You've got to be kidding me. Not again! Anyway, back again, sorry about that folks. But anyway though, um, unfortunately though, we don't have the ability to actually have ourselves the burrowing flower somewhere, or neither did the, um, the, uh, the cat power-up either, because the reason why we say the, uh, the burrowing flower in the first place is because uh, if we actually bypass this particular sequence here, then you should probably notice that the last green star is going to be over there. So, we'll probably come back to that level, assuming if we actually get ourselves these two power-ups, which are, you know, the Cat Bell and the Burrowing Flower at the same time, too. So, even then, though, we can definitely expect it that. Anyway, so now we need to deal with these freaking Hammer Bros. I really still despise them so much. I know you still can't stand them, Sylvester, even especially those on the old school Mario games these days. So anyways, let's go and climb onto the staircase until we actually spotted something more related to... Hey, it's Bowser again, but this time with a much more brighter light onto his car. I'm guessing he mu must have uh, rebuilt it somehow. And plus he's actually really gorgeous in during this particular uh, model of Bowser this time. But anyways, um, this particular battle, it feels exactly similar to how it does in the first time you're actually fighting against with him. 
Next up, it's going to be a lot more difficult due to um, these obstacles you need to dodge, mainly due to um, Bowser's uh, fire breathing attack. Which even though sometimes every now and then they decide to now place them on the ground, well, at least into the actual ground itself. And also you need to be very careful of in LC forms of, well, obviously the lava itself, which you don't want to fall off necessarily. And another thing you need to avoid is these spike traps, which even though sometimes they can either blend in or another, or sometimes they actually just poke to you, so you can just have to watch out for that as well. So, um, this is what the third phase of this particular fight gets a little bit too tricky and difficult at times, probably due to, um, you know, some difficult um, obstacles we need to dodge, so... And of course, um, as you probably expected, since we don't have ourselves the last two green stars, um, we're still able to actually, uh, we, we still have to actually beat this boss again until we actually just fully completely done with the actual level, so... Yeah, as far as I can concern with this, so anyway. It looks like we're doing not too bad so far, especially noticeable how the fact that, um, the only time we actually did fail sometimes in LC forms of the golden flag holes and during most likely in World 5, but even then I digress. So much like last time, all you have to do is just uh, kick the likes out of these football bombs right at Bowser. Yes, exactly right at Bowser before it counts as a hit. So even then, that way you should be able to deal with him. And there he goes. He's now toasted. And hopefully that um, his car is now automatically destroyed. So even then, though, that uh, we would able to actually rescue the seventh and the final Sprinkly Princess. So. Even though, though, with that being said, though, we've been pretty much almost guaranteed that how the fact that, oh, we literally off by one coin by getting that another extra one up. But even though, though, we can hopefully guarantee we can actually get ourselves a next power up, assuming if we actually just, uh, yeah, if we actually got that. And we can long jump for the win once again and able to get the golden flagpole. And there we go. All seven of those sprinkly princesses is now being rescued, and I believe the game should be over at this point. Yeah. Okay, at least I expected that, but I digress. Wait, what? How come Bowser's still... here? Oh, wait a minute, he's not done yet! And it looks like uh, the Sprinkly Princess is being kidnapped once again. But this time that Bowser's got away with them with this big jar. I know, right? How could possibly that Bowser's gonna carry this large jar like that? So anyways, the, de the stamp on this level is the forms of Mario performs a boomerang um, technique. So anyways, that does it for that level. Now, before we actually end things off though, we need to actually cut ourselves off until we actually get ourselves the last two green stars. And hopefully we'll finish up for that point right there. So yeah, we'll meet you guys back. Okay, so there's the green star number two, so you can either use the, again, Tanuki suit or the cat suit, which even in our high suggest cat suit because of, well, wall climbing skills. And the third and final green star is by simply we have to uh, keep ourselves our bow rank flower until you toss the bow rank from. So anyways, that does it for that level done, fully 100%, the uh, fully 100% completed from the likes of World Castle now. So if you're probably wondering why the um, the panic mode animation is now been uh now no longer there, it's probably because of how the fact that we have to revisit to uh, World One again to actually grab something more related to some more items onto a, the Toad Shop. So anyway, so that's it for that world, and now we're able to actually move on to possibly the final main world of the game, which I believe that's why how the fact that the clear pipe itself is now all sprinkly. And what does that lead us to? Oh, I seriously did not notice that he did entirely build the amusement park. I mean, Dr. Eggman got the amusement park, but now Bowser got the amusement park now. So, um, yeah, two major villains from the amusement park, I suppose. So, anyways, tune us next time on Let's Play Super Mario 3D World. It's the fact that we're going to be moving on to World Bowser, aka World 8. So, yeah, see you guys next time. Later, fellas. See you guys then.